So today's video, we're going to focus on closeness of substitutes and proportion of income spent on the good. And we're going to focus first on the close, the closeness of substitutes for a good or, or service. So the closer the substitutes for a good or service, then the more elastic is the demand for it. So that's pretty much a fact that you need to know. And we're going to go through a couple of examples for this. So let's take oil for, for an example. Oil from which we make gasoline, which we make gasoline. Uh, has substitutes, has substitutes, but none that are very close, none that are very close. So the demand for oil is inelastic. Now let's take a look at plastics. So example plastics. So plastics are close substitutes for metals. Close substitutes for metals. So the demand for metals is elastic. So uh, we can already see from these two examples that the degree of substitutability, substitute, substitutability uh, between two goods, between two goods also depends on how narrowly or broadly we define them. So let's take a look at oil first. So oil um, from a general public uh, perspective there is not there isn't any substitute that uh, there isn't any substitute for gasoline so uh, so gasoline is made from uh, made from oil so in that case if gasoline doesn't have uh, very close substitutes then the demand for gasoline is inelastic then that must mean that oil is inelastic as well now plastics are, from a general perspective, they're close substitutes for metal, metals, and so when we're producing things, we can just substitute metals for plastic. So that's why the demand for metals is uh, elastic. So the degree of substitutability for, or the degree of substitutability between two goods, they really depend on how we generally look at them. And let's go through one final example to solidify this concept that we're learning. So let's take the example of a personal computer. Now the personal computer has no close substitute. And you must be thinking, uh, what really? Personal computer has no close substitute. But what you're really thinking is you're thinking about the brand. So let's talk about brands. So the Dell PC is one kind of personal computer. Now Dell PC and an HP PC they're both uh, personal computers, so the Dell PC is a close substitute for the HP PC. And that means that the elasticity of demand for a personal computer, for a personal computer, is lower than the elasticity uh, of demand for a Dell or HP or HP PC. That is because a personal computer is pretty much a group that encompasses all the brands. So this group doesn't really have any substitute uh, that can substitute it. But if we're going to look at the brands, then there are plenty of substitutes to substitute a single brand of uh, a single brand or a, a single brand or product line of, of personal computers. And that's the idea that I want you to grasp in this case. Now, Necessities are a group of groups that have poor substitutes and uh, they're pretty much crucial for our well-being. They're pretty much crucial for us to survive. So they generally have an elastic demand. So examples of necessities are food and shelter and I guess that's self-explanatory. And luxuries are a group of goods that has many substitutes. One of the substitutes is to not buy the good and thus Luxury has an elastic demand, and an example of that would be exotic vacations. Now, let's go through the proportion of income spent on goods, and I'm going to move this chalkboard up. So, move this up, and proportion of income spent on the good. So, the greater the proportion of income spent on the good, the more elastic is the demand for it. So the more you shell out for the good, then the more elastic demand for it is the idea here. And let's go through some examples to solidify this idea. 
So let's imagine that the price of chewing gum doubles and you really like chewing gum. So the price of chewing gum doubles. You consume almost as much gum as before, almost as much gum as before. Then that must mean your demand for gum is inelastic because you don't really care about the price for gum. Like what a pack of gum is like a dollar or two. So then you don't really care. So your demand is elastic. Whether the price rises or falls, you still buy the same amount. Now, let's take the example of an apartment. So let's say your apartment rent doubles. What we would do is you will, sh you will shriek and look for more, um, more students or something to share your apartment so you could split the rent. Then your demand for housing, your demand for housing is not as inelastic as your demand for chewing gum, as your demand for gum. And be, this is because um, at, in one event, you shallow a lot of money. And from that perspective, um, that's a lot of money. So, uh, so the change in price for your apartment, so the change in rent uh, causes you to take action and causes you to look for more students to split the rent. And that is why um, this apartment is more elastic than the chewing gum. So let's just note that down. So housing takes a big chunk out of your budget, out of your budget. Uh, but uh, but chewing gum, but chewing gum takes a little. So you would hardly notice. You would hardly notice the higher price on gum, the higher price on gum. But the rent puts your budget under severe strain. Under severe strain. And I think that is good enough to help you solidify the concept here. That's all I want to go through in this video. So um, yeah, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching.